Hey, everybody. How you doing? There we go. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm Dr. Lee, so I'm the Dean of the Academy, and uh, I just would like to welcome all of you to the call, our little fireside chat for tonight. So I thought I would mm -hmm. change my uh, virtual background to mimic our, our mood here. Um, so I'd like to kind of give you a little bit of background. So first, as I need to mention to everybody, we are recording this because we're going to be posting this for families to see that uh, we're not able to make it tonight. So just to be aware that this is it is being recorded. Um, okay. So <laughs> the other is, uh, so let me introduce myself. So my name is Dr. Paul Lee. I, so I was a Cadet Valley Forge Military Academy myself. Uh, uh, just about uh, 40 years ago. So uh, yeah, just a few years ago. And uh, so uh, I was there for six years. I went uh, four years in the academy through the band, uh, spent a lot of time in the regimental band and the choir, uh, traveling all over the place and singing at different places along the East Coast. Um, and then I left, I went to, through the, the college, the college system that was there. It's called the Early Commission Program. Um, so I went through, became a second lieutenant my second year. So graduated a, a sophomore year, I became a second lieutenant, um, went to the National Guard for two years while I finished school up before my accessions packet was opened and I went to Armour, um, became a, an Army Scout. Um, so I spent seven years in the military. Uh, so a little bit of background too, so I went through the ranks. Uh, so. Um, Went, uh, was a cadet plebe, obviously, the first year, went up through sergeants, uh, was band captain my fourth year, uh, second captain my fifth year, and regimental commander, which is the highest ranking cadet my sixth year that was there. Um, so I had the experience. So there's really not much that the boys are going to be able to pull over on me that I have not already done myself or have not already experienced myself. Um, and it actually benefits uh, because I'm able to tie in or I'm able to, to touch different points with them, what, what they're going through, understanding where they're at um, throughout the plebe system, but also during their different phases, second year, third year. Because it doesn't matter what grade they're in, there's some similarities between those years of different elements that they're going to go through. Um, so uh, academically, so my background's a little bit uh, is, is mixed all over. So I've been in government and in industry. I've had my own company. I've, I've been in academia. Um, I'm coming from uh, being a teacher for many years uh, at the collegiate level for anatomy and physiology. Um, I did, uh, I guess, Cabrini, uh, Valley Forge, then I finished up at Cabrini, did Villanova, um, Georgetown University, uh, and also the Uniformed Services University, the health sciences at the military's medical school um, in Bethesda, Maryland. So I finished up there. Um, went into the academic side for a while, started doing consulting for government. So it's, it's, a, it's a hodgepodge of different mixture. My last before coming to Valley Forge was the assistant <coughs> of engineering at Northern Community <coughs> College System, which is where my family is. And it's actually where I'm sitting right now, although the virtual background, you can't see my, my, uh, my couches with my daughter sitting in the background. Um, so I have three of my own children. So, uh, so I completely understand going through. I have one who's 20, uh, one who is going to be turning 19, and another who's 14, uh, soon to be 15. Uh, so we're going through the gamut. I've got two now out of high school. Uh, the, the second one just graduated this year, uh, and I have one just starting high school uh, this year as well. So, um, so I've been through the the mix on that end. This is now will be my third year at Valley Forge. Uh, Valley Forge Military Academy as their dean. Um, so we're trying to, we're, we're modifying and putting different things into place. Um, uh, my goal is to continually increase the education, increase the offerings, uh, which includes online components as well as uh, in face to face components, as well as relationships with surrounding schools. So we have a technical school that we're uh, currently trying to associate with. Uh, because of the COVID uh, situation, we'll probably bring one of their teachers to our campus um, to teach. And this is for our kids that will be in e-battery to teach engine mechanics and engine repair and diagnostics and things along those lines. We have our own maintenance area that's up at the where our vehicles are kept. That's the e-battery are the cadets that typically will drive the vehicles and the motorcycles around the parades. Um, they also learn how to take care of those vehicles and, and, uh, and and whatnot. 
Um, so that's kind of my background a little bit, uh, kind of where we're heading. Uh, we do have an online uh, Valley Forge Military Academy, which we've started as well, and that's that's uh, geared towards a different type of population. But we, as uh, students who are uh, at the academy, will have access to those different courses as well. So we find some students um, are high achievers and they want to, and they're kind of moving a little bit beyond where their grade level may be. So we individualize their uh, their education paradigm to match their needs and to, to match how fast they can run. Um, this is a benefit I have as an independent school is I don't have to, I'm not stuck in the mold of you're in ninth grade, this is what the ninth grader does and only you can only do this. So we have, uh, um, I think last year I had a 10th grader taking a college class in calculus um, I had, uh, I think we've got some other students that have been juniors and seniors who take the college uh, certificate for cybersecurity. So we usually move our juniors and seniors when they're ready. I don't do advanced placement classes at Valley Forge. We go right into the, if they're at that level, I'll send them right to the college. So if we have a college class available for them to take, this way when they graduate from the academy, they graduate both with their diploma, but also with transcripts from the college. And the transcripts of Middle State Certified College, so they transfer to different colleges. Um, so that's kind of our little bit of our background. So I want to make this, part of this is kind of a two-way conversation, so I wanted to throw it out there and and, uh, and give you a chance to ask some questions. And, you know, this is, uh, is obviously we you're, you're about to, uh, you're thinking about allowing your precious son to come to Valley Forge and, and you want to know uh, information. And so this is a great opportunity for you to ask, uh, you know, me. And if I can't answer it, we'll get it out to the other folks and we will get you an answer. So I'm going to open the floor um, and I'll stop, you know, talking away and give you a chance to ask some questions. So does anybody have any questions? I can go around the I can go around the, the phone here if we want to. So I'll start with mom. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. So who's the young man in the background? This is Dylan. Dylan, He's how you doing there, sir? He's going into eighth grade this year. Fantastic. And this one over here is Jay Jr. Hi, how are you, sir? Good to see you. They're shy. Oh, that's okay. That, that, that'll change real fast when my building. Because every morning they come in there is the first thing that will be is greeted by me in the morning. And if they don't answer, I'll usually follow them until they answer. No kidding. Okay. <laughs> it's, the idea is to teach them by, uh, by experience. Go ahead. That was actually one of my questions. Like I know from previous um, chats that you are directly involved with the students. You monitor their education. If you see any kind of slipping, uh, things like that, you'll you'll reach out to them and, and see where they're at. So um, also with that, so you kind of like build, it sounds like you build like a personal relationship with each student um, so that they can feel comfortable coming to you and, and um, talking as a, you know, mentoring and things like that, um, I'm assuming. And then that actually brought me to another question. How is it for, uh, that they do have their mentors or like people that they can go to and talk to if so they're the, struggling with personal things. Sure. So those are great questions. So, so, so the first way we have things broken down right now is if, he's, if your son is going into eighth grade, uh, Miss Lauren Wolchuk is my assistant dean, um, and she handles the she her last position title was director of the lower school. So she's kind of my role, but at the lower school level. And, but even even regardless of whether you know, she's handling it or I'm handling it or Mr. Barkley, who's the associate dean, handles it. Uh, the three of us are always in constant communication and the three of us, you know, we, the, the students all know that there's an open door policy. Um, you know, if a student comes, as long as I, you know, in the, I've had them knocking on the door while I'm having a meeting, which is okay for me. I, you know, I'd, I'd rather they feel comfortable enough to be able to come and ask. If I can't address it, I'll, I'll hand them over to Mr. Barkley and usually follow back up a little bit later. Um, I'm all about self-advocacy. Uh, my three kids, I've been very adamant to make sure that they know how to self-advocate uh, at their own schools. And so that's something I bring to Valley Forge as well, where by the time they're done, um, it's one thing for the parent to be to get involved. And I know public school parents are intimately involved. Um, we allow them to, to have that role as well at Valley Forge, but I encourage them to let the young man make the mistake 
learn from the mistake and and choose a better path. Um, and so I'll usually guide them. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had students in my office and you know they'll just say, oh, this you know this happened and this happened. I said, so walk me through it. And then it's usually, so what did you do? Because I always want to tell you that one side. So well, tell me your role in that process. Then they kind of go through and we'll talk about you know what's a different way to handle it. I've had other scenarios where this teacher, I just can't get along with this teacher. Okay, well, that's, that's, so, so how are you going to approach this? I want you to go talk to this. So I'll walk them through different processes of saying, how, what's, a, what's a way to do it? Mr. Barkley, I know, does the same thing, and Ms. Wolchuk does as well. Um, so Ms. Wolchuk has a little bit more involvement with parents a lot of times because of the, it's the seventh, eighth grade and the ninth grade. And so she's, she's usually pushing communications out, and parents are usually calling her. Um, and if, if there's a scenario where I, I usually have folks and I tell them, look, communicate, if you need something quickly, communicate the guidance at the FMAC.edu, because that goes to all of us. And then that way, whoever it's pertinent to, we quickly grab the name, and that way it's a faster turnaround communication. Um, what was so that called? It's, uh, it's guidance at the FMAC.edu. And oh, we'll okay. make sure we can, we'll, we usually like post that on the bottom of the videos too, so we can make sure that that's Okay. Something that we get out to you guys. Um, I think that answered your two questions, right? Yeah. Okay. And so I, I'm going to move. I'm going to shift on over to uh, to Jackie. Hi. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Okay. Um, we have a few, uh, a, a couple questions, and and I had asked um, one of our questions to. Anna Brennan, and, mm -hmm. and she indicated that you guys might not know what you're doing for next year fully until the end of the month, but I was just wondering, like, with everything going on with COVID and um, maybe having to revert back to a virtual environment, like, could you maybe just tell, um, let us explain to us how you guys handled that that period of time academically and, and structurally um, not a, not a during problem. this period and how you, you're you anticipating maybe you, you might manage that situation if it comes back in the fall? Sure, so, so, so there's three parts to what you just asked, right? So the first one would be, I'm actually intimately involved with writing that plan for next year. So um, it's all in here, yeah, but I'm putting it on paper. So I can give you a lot of what's up in here right now. So the, the idea is simply this, is that Valley Forge is a very unique environment in and of itself, especially for the academy, seventh, eighth, the seventh through the 12th graders. Uh, because once the, kids, the, once the students are on campus, we can restrict them to campus. So in other words, they don't go home. I mean, they're not gonna go home anyway during their plea training. And so what does that do for us? It now creates a scenario as if your son is still in your house, right? So. They're, they're not getting exposed to outside people. They're not, the only people that they would get exposed to are their teachers. And so we're coming with the guidelines of the teachers would have to wear masks when they're coming in. The teachers are gonna get scanned when they come in with them and, and evaluated by the nursing staff. You know, what's their temperature? How do they feel? Um, and, they, and we're gonna build it in. So if the teacher has a is not feeling well, they go home. We, we get a doctor's clearance for them to come back. Um, which can lead us, in, and I'll finish that thought, which will lead us to the second one, which is how we handle, you know, if a teacher can't be there or whatever else. So the next would be, um, we're, we phase our return of all of the students back to our campus. So the Con and I just went through the timeline. Um, and there's about, to bring every cadet back on campus, I believe there's eight separate groups that come on the campus at different times. The first one, which is going to be starting in July, is our ROTC. Um, and so that's the college ROTC group. So they'll already be on campus. They're already going to be isolated om probably almost a full month before your son gets on the campus. So that's 160 bodies already that are going to be quarantined, go through the process, and, and separated from the group. Um, up to that point, the college students will be coming in at, at uh, two weeks before the academy cadets come in. So that's going to be another process where they're already going to have that 14-day window um, of, of being monitored and evaluated. Um, international students, that's the ones that we're still working on right now. Uh, we, I can tell you how we dealt with some international student who tried going home, got kicked back, 
and we isolated him for 14 days in one of our barracks. Um, he still got his academics, he still got everything else, but he wasn't allowed to uh, communicate or be within contact of any other cadet until he was cleared after 14 days. Um, so we have already built into our, the, the way that we bring cadets back in a separate group policy with lots of time frame between them that allows us to evaluate, make sure that if, if something happens, we can, we can quickly switch to another. The other is we have the, the college group that comes in, which will be the first, are physically separated from the academy group. So they are in, they are on a different side of campus. They are in different, they're not in the same barracks. They're, there is no touch point between them. They're, they have a separate academic building, everything else. The only place that's a touch point would be the mess hall. And that's an easy one to figure out because there's a square footage in the mess hall and a number of tables and everything else. We can cycle them through. So college would report at this time, you could do a cleaning in between and then you could have the academy cadets come in and, and use a separate side of the, uh, of the whole building as it is. So it's, it's, there's two different sides. We can have college one side, the academy the other side. Um, so there's lots of uh, ability to separate them more than six foot apart um, within that facility itself. Um, so that's the only point that there's going to be a touch between the college and the academy cadets is that mess hall. And so we're just, that's going to be our area we're going to really focus on making sure we have policies in place for making for cleanliness and so forth. Um, so when the cadets first come on campus, I envision for at least the first two weeks, they're all going to wear masks. Um, until after the first 14 days, basically, that's when we'll determine if there's been, if they've been cleared, the masks can come off at certain locations, such as in the barracks, um, in the school, in the classroom, if they're in the classroom, um, so forth. Um, because at this point, it's almost as if they were living in a house with each other, because they're not, they're not going anywhere, they're not getting exposed to anything. Um, so we, we did that with our international students this year in the spring. We had uh, 26 cadets who could not go home after April. So on April 13th, they were all moved to a separate building. And we have a couple different buildings that are open. So if we need to, we can move and isolate uh, accordingly. Um, we have a medical staff that's on board 24 seven. So we're looking at how that policy is of if a student comes in sick, they go in, they go to the back door, they get evaluated. Um, typically if they are, if they live close to the school um, and they, they come out to have uh, to be sick in general, doesn't necessarily have to be COVID. Um, a lot of times the, the, the school can reach back to the parents and say, why don't you come get them, let them recover at home and uh, we can, we'll put them in the online instruction. So that's the second part that you had said. How did we handle this, this last year? Um, I'd like to think that we were about, actually I can tell you right now from feedback we got from parents that have students in public schools, we blew the rest of them away. We started within three days after. So April 13th, we closed the school. Uh, we closed it two hours before the governor made the, the edict and we did it based on our, you know, watching and looking at CDC decide, this, uh, decision points. Um, the following Tuesday, we started our first online classes and we used Google Classroom. So before the Friday before the students left, every student was given a code. Every student was signed up for all of their classes on the Google Classroom. Um, then the next step was on Tuesday, we start. We did a phased approach where the first approach was um, each of the students had to log in. We were troubleshooting who couldn't log in. And, and so we divided the students up into smaller groups and assigned it to all of the administrators, um, the, the, the counselors plus myself uh, Aaron, the registrar, and, and um, the assistant dean. So everybody tracked each of the students to make sure they were got, they were on board. So between Tuesday and Friday, uh, schedules were being put out. The class material was already being uploaded into Google Classroom. A lot of the students were already starting it. Um, material was the same as the normal you know the normal class period. Um, and then the next Monday, we we started doing virtual classes. So the, the, it was all via Google Meet. So we had a schedule that was put out that says, okay, so every Monday your math, your science classes will be meeting and here's the schedule. Every Tuesday it's your math classes, every Wednesday it's gonna be your English classes, Thursdays were history, 
Fridays were the languages and arts and other electives. And so, um, and then each instructor was given five office hours. So through the week where, so every day there was an office hour. So if they weren't, so they, the day that they taught, that's where they covered material that the students would work on during the week, gave them kind of a heads up of what it was. Those were all recorded. So if a student missed it or needed to go back and review it, they could do so. Throughout the, that time, the uh, teachers were posting different assignments. Um, some of those assignments came with recordings. It says, okay, let's talk about today we're going to derive this factor and let me, let's walk through it so the teacher would record it. They post the recording and then the students would watch the recording and then do the homework. Um, the biggest complaint that we all, that we got from the guys and I kind of thought it was more the seniors. Nobody else complained. I think the, the younger students were able to get through this easier than the older students. And, and I know this with my own children because the, the older students have not yet, they weren't brought up in a complete electronic environment. They were still getting touch points, textbooks and paper. But my youngest, who is now going to be a freshman in high school, she is completely online, 100%. She knows how to do this stuff and just they grew up with it. And so that's what we were finding out with our students is that our younger students did really, really well up to 10th grade, did really well on these in, in the uh, online stuff. We had some challenges with the juniors and seniors. And so we kept evaluating and kept working with them as best we could to help them get through, including daily phone conversations with some of our counselors to get them through that aspect. So we graduated on the, uh, on the 21st of May. So we had our virtual graduation. Uh, we've been, you guys, we can get those out to you guys to let you see what they look like, the YouTube videos. Um, they were done, I think they were, uh, they were done fairly well. The Parents Association was intimately involved with helping us get that set up. Um, and so we had an eighth grade promotion ceremony, an award ceremony, and a graduation, all, all virtual. Uh, we didn't miss a step. So we were already, when, when some of the public schools were starting, just starting to involve the students in learning, we were already in our fifth week. So, so we didn't miss a beat. Students thought that some of the juniors and seniors thought that we were giving them more homework. You're giving us more stuff than we normally do. And I said, you're forgetting in the classroom, you normally do stuff and then you have homework. But because now you're at home, you're getting everything. And so it looks like it's double the amount of work, but it's really the same amount of work. It's just that you're more responsible. So a lot of time management stuff that we had to work with. So some of our counselors would sit and walk them through, okay, what is your schedule going to look like today? And so they would, you know, let's set up your schedule. So we have, uh, you know, the, our biggest, the group that we were concerned about the most were our IEP and 504 cadets, the ones that need a lot of guidance here at the school in the first place. And so those were kind of the top tier focus because they had a lot of time. And then, but other than that, we still, teachers were available enough to help students with those office hours get involved. And so everything, all the office hours and the classroom instruction, um, that was done virtually through Google um, Meet. So they were one-on-one, -on -one, like, like as if we're talking right now through Zoom, is exactly what the class went through. We didn't use Zoom because there were some control issues with Zoom. Um, Google Meet was a lot easier to have uh, the control, and and some of the, a lot of teachers were used to Google Meet. Eventually, uh, we're going to phase, and I'm not saying by this year, but between now and the following year, we're going to phase into what's called Canvas, which is our the platform for our online school system, um, which has a lot more you know, a lot. The features are a little more robust, um, but uh, but the Google Classroom was enough for us to be able to get all of the instruction across and do this, including our final exams, which were all handled um, online and through that process. So, um, so what are we looking at for next year or this year coming up? If something happens, uh, again, we would follow the, exactly the same procedures that we did um, for the spring because they worked out 100% with the communication and the rollout of the students to come get it was used. What we did was parents would come, they would get the students. Um, we did based on the governor's feedback. We said, we close the school for two weeks and then we would let, keep everybody informed a week out from a decision point that says we're either, we're still waiting or we've made a decision to extend it. Um, so that was one, uh, during this entire time, obviously the instruction did not lose a beat. So, um, so that's, that was our key thing, our clear, uh, 
you know, for me was reaching out to middle states and saying I have unclear guidelines or guidance from the Department of Education, so this is what I want to do. Am I okay to do it? And they said absolutely. So that's our accreditation agency, so I just wanted to make sure they were happy with our plan. I kind of got a chuckle because it was after, it was almost two weeks before our graduation that Department of Education asked us to write up our plan, our continue, a continuing ed plan for students, <laughs> and we were already finishing, so we just said, well, that's what we did. So it's, uh, so it's over and done with. So um, for worst case scenario of a closure of the school, we would, it would go strictly online and we're set to do it. We did it already and we did it successfully. Um, it, the way that we're looking at, at monitoring, our classroom sizes are typically small anyway. Uh, they're typically up to about, the average is about 14 students um, in the classroom. And then some, we try to keep some of the more specialized classes a little bit smaller. Some of the elective classes go up a little bit bigger. I think the largest elective class, something like art or something along those lines was like 22 students, which we usually don't like to do. Uh, if we had a scenario like that where a bunch of students had to take art, um, options would be put them into separate electives, talk to the parents to get uh, to see if they want to do an online course instead, an online elective. Um, and this is one where we now know our student population from this year, which ones are successful at online by themselves and which ones aren't. So it's the ones that we have demonstrated that they are successful, we'll let them have those choices. The ones that aren't so successful, um, if we have to put them in a virtual type of scenario, we'll have somebody in the room with them. So they're not doing it by themselves. Um, we are looking at pushing for Chromebooks this year. So I don't want any students coming on with any systems other than a Chromebook. So we're looking at getting our own Chromebooks or giving you guys a link to what Chromebook you can buy. That's going to be I think about a couple hundred dollars for this thing. Um, it allows us to be able to go in, control, put some controls in place on where they can go, what they can do, and, and places they go on our wireless network. And at the same time, it allows us that, let's say the student gets sick, or, and it doesn't have to be the COVID, or they get quarantined or they have the flu or whatever else, um, they can still do their classes if they're up and, well, you know, up and ready. Or at nighttime when we do our study hall, instead of me bringing people from outside wandering around their barracks, uh, we have the office hours like we did this year. So they would have, they'd be able to go onto the computer and access any department, a rep from any department from that seven to 9.30 time period for doing their, uh, doing their homework. Um, and did so you are, still build in that study hall during that period of time? When you so we, we, we still have that study hall. We're going we're gonna to modify it a little bit this year because I think, and the way we're going to choose to do is if a student is academically strong, so they, they, they demonstrate their grades are good, they're not on the academic. Um, so we run grades every Friday. And so that's why we tell parents, don't look at the grades until Friday because uh, you know, I, I still remember when I come home, would get these texts from my son's school, his grades would go from an A to an F to a C to an F to an A, and all well, within two days, and I'd be standing at the door waiting for him to walk in, ready to chew him out, you know, and he's like, I turned it in. So I tell the parents, I said, look, we, we go through and make sure everybody populates their grades in on Thursday night, so on Friday morning, we pull the grades. PIAA requires that anyway, that's our athletic association, so we have to put it, so you know every Friday where your son is going to is standing academically. And so, and you all still have access to his power school, which is what we use. Um, and so Miss Katie Ford helps you guys. So you'll see where he's at with his getting his homework in and everything else. Um, so uh, for that process. Um, and then what else? So, so if they have their good grades, we're going to, we're looking at building in some time to them to get out of the barracks, potentially use the boodle shop, uh, or which has some game gaming stuff in it or potentially go down and shoot some hoops in the basketball uh, arena. Just a lot of these guys, are, they're, they're too, they, they have a lot of energy. And so the best thing to do is to keep them busy. They're going to be tired as it is because we are building in a, um, a fairly robust uh, athletic and PE and PT program at the beginning of the day. Um, so they want, we're looking, our, what we're, we're looking at right now is that their classes probably won't start until approximately 9 a.m., um, but everything from the moment they wake up and between that time and 9 a.m. is going to be waking up, PT, PE, eating, 
getting ready for school and getting to school. So, um, and that'll be all under the, the Commandant side and help with some of our, by some of our instructors. So there, when your son comes on board, he's gonna be taking a PT test. We're gonna evaluate his push-ups, sit-ups, one mile run, plus uh, I guess a few other, uh, yeah, I guess then there's one more, which is this, um, uh, I forgot what, what the other one, crunchies, I think the number of crunches, that's the uh, fourth one that they do. And then, uh, and then going from there, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be working with them throughout the year to get them better. We've already, all the officers and NCOs, the whole commandant department, all the adults have been PTing um, at 6.30, 7.30 in the morning up at our upper fields, getting ready for these guys coming in. Uh, the returning cadet leadership, they have all been tasked to start building their running um, and to start getting themselves into shape. So a lot of the students are out running now. They're getting up to two miles. Um, on their runs, um, so but we understand a lot of cadets aren't going to do this, so we're doing we're we're pushing. It's called uh, um, it's called the from uh, couch to 5K. It's a it's a nice little training regime the commandant put out. You can get it through um, you know some of these little training seminars that go on. There's a little radio thing you can watch, and it helps them. It helps somebody who's never run before, you know, kind of step into building up to a 5K run. Um, over, I think it's like six weeks or seven weeks or something like that. So, eight, oh yeah, it's eight weeks to 5K or something like that. So, from couch to, to 5K. So, those are some of the things that we're doing. And then, um, so hopefully that'll, that answers a little bit more to your question than, than you asked, but that, you know, gives you a little bit of a feel. So, all the stuff that we're going to be doing is geared towards CDC guidelines, the, the state guidelines. Again, you know, we are very, um, because we are such a close knit, we are not going to be allowing a lot of people to come on campus, except for the faculty and staff during this time until we go until we're out of the green zone, right? So alumni are going to be given directions that they are not allowed to walk on campus. Um, occasionally, we have uh, neighbors that like to just do their trek through our campus as well, and we'll just let them know the building you know, it's closed off, not allowed. Um, and so it, we, like I said, we successfully kept everybody and everything isolated from the barracks of 26 international cadets. Um, they finished through the year. Not one of them got sick. Not one cadet uh, last year uh, got COVID um, that was on campus. So, um, and then uh, so the and then the internationals those are the only ones we're concerned about. But we uh, we have a, a kind of a quarantine process in place. And we're looking at bringing them back a couple weeks early as well to give them that time to, to prep. So. It's all about the, the health and well-being of, of the young men, um, as well as the safety of the faculty and staff that are older um, and also have parents that, that are with them. I mean, my mom is visiting me. She's 74, so I am very uh, keyed in on making sure that I don't get exposed. Well, thank you. Sure. Yeah. So Ethan, I have an Ethan. Any questions? Um, you, you mentioned that the classes start about nine in the morning. Yes. Um, so what does their day look like from then on? So their classes are pretty much going to be from nine. So we're going to be doing what's called, it's, it's going to be a kind of a modified block. Um, because of, this is the only way that we could build it in. It's not a block that we're calling a modified block because it has sections. So Monday, Wednesdays, those will be their class periods from, uh, it'll be from 9 to 3 p.m. And then they usually have their sporting events at 4 p.m. Um, if they're not doing sporting events, there's, uh, they end up having, um, uh, what is it, their clubs that are associated with, and if they're not in the clubs, uh, the commandant's time and the commandant's uh, has different elements for intramurals and and things for them to do, which are not not voluntary. They're, they're all mandatory for them to do. It's not that they're they're not going to be hanging out in the sure. room. Yeah. Um, so uh, and typically we and it depends on what the time of day is for that. So Mondays, Wednesdays will be one section of classes. Tuesdays, Thursdays will be another. And then Fridays, they'll do every class, but it's only going to be 30 minutes long. So it'll be kind of a review day for all the, what did you cover on, you know, during the week? So it gives the teachers a chance to kind of do a quick review and catch up. So this is a, it's a new schedule we're trying, but it's based on the need to be able to, um, you know, to, to diversify as well as, as move things around for the situation. Um, 
but typically the, then it's uh, they'll do their after this is all that said and done the sports and everything would end usually right up to third mess third mess is usually 5:30 i think it can go it, it'll probably range between 5:30 and 6:30 or around that time frame if we're phasing people into the mess hall and then uh, during that time afterwards is where they go to their study hall uh, which is in barracks so they're in their rooms doing their academics they have their tax officers there um, and that's where we are going to try to build in those that, that are doing strong academically they're not on academic probation would be given the chance to go to the boodle shop um, and or and or the gym where there should be a faculty well there, there will be a faculty member or staff member in there um, to supervise uh, to at least give them some physical activity and give them that, that choice we're working out some of the details. The one thing I forgot to say is that we have a, um, there is an eighth class period and the eighth class period on the Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's a life skills class. Um, that is run from the commandant side uh, of the house. And those are all things that are geared towards giving the young men skills for life. You know, how to change oil, how to change a tire, how to, how to make food, how to do, how to do some sewing, how to do, you know, lots of different things to be, the etiquette class is built in as well that we have. So um, we just, uh, we just went to the PA Department of Education to find out that, uh, so we can actually build that into a credit class. So they would have credits for academic credits for those classes as, as long as we build upon it uh, for skills. So, um, so that's kind of the, the, uh, the general layout of a day. Uh, so, uh, morning time, the PT, breakfast, prep for school, do your school, um, do the activities after school, primarily the sports. Um, and there is, by the way, we just started an e-gaming um, sport, so e-gaming team that started this year. I don't know if you're all, that, it took me as an adult a little bit longer to learn about what that one meant, but uh, you guys may all already get this one. There's multi-million dollar scholarships available. It is, it is treated exactly the same way a physical sport like football, baseball is taught. It has coaches, it has trainers, they are in competition with different schools, there are scholarships available. Um, there's a lot of money that has been dumped into this with the realization that there's a lot of young men that they're not playing physical sports, they don't want to play physical sports, but they want to engage in this type of gaming, so they created an actual e-sport out of it. And uh, so it's, it's on the rise and we've started our own team here at Valley Forge. We're building the computer systems and uh, we're actually starting this summer. We have a small group of our current cadets uh, that have enrolled in it. will be starting to, to do their training. So we're excited about that. Yeah, so it gives all the students a chance. If they're not in football or baseball or swimming or any of the sports that are active during the season, then they're in that. Uh, they'll have a chance to get into that. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Sure. So I have uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Liu. Any questions? You're, you're on mute, Jonathan. Oh, no questions. Got it. So all right, so I'm going to keep, uh, so let's see, I'm now starting to read there. Hey, good for you. Yeah. I like it. Uh, let's see, I like the morning schedule. Good. Don't have any questions. So I guess we can go back around. Has anybody thought of anything else along the way when you're doing this? Or Okay. I did. Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, can you go over it? Because I missed that. A lot of was going on in the background. Um, what was the Friday schedule again? So the Friday schedule is it's the same, you know, core schedule that they have, with the exception that, they're going to do every class. So instead of you know Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, or Tuesday, Thursday, they'll do all class periods. So they have eight class periods. So during that time, there'll be 30, 30 minutes each. That'll be a great, we're going to use that as kind of a, let's review the stuff that we did during the week, find out where touch points are. And this will give us a chance to basically find where, prevent the weaknesses ahead of time and get people back and caught up on, on different skills and isolating. So, like and then, yeah, this will be, this will be our first time trying that with, uh, you know, uh, have the larger classes and condense them in that, in that Friday. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll see how that one works. I think it has a lot of benefit because it's, it'll be able to rotate them through. They're not burning out too much sitting there, you know, with, they're not getting new content. It's more of a review. Right. And the review of the week. I like 
like that. Um, and then how long does the evening study hall um, last? So it's usually an hour and a half. Okay. So it's, it's a, uh, it, it, sometimes they start at seven to nine, depending on the, the tax officer or 7.30 to 9.30. So it's. And during that time they can, if they're not on academic probation, they can hit their books, study, and then go to the yep. gym and do whatever else. So it's kind of like a free time. It's, well, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's, if they're in the barracks, it'll be a quiet hour. So in the, in the barracks, they, they can't be making noise and running around. They can be on, if they can do it, if they want to do something on their computer, as long as they have their headphones on, they can do it on, on their computer, get a, you know, okay. do whatever they need to. Um, and again, it's going to be, the computer will be the Chromebooks, right? So they'll be a little limited on what they're going to be doing. Right. Um, so, and then the other one is just to get them out and, and uh, socialize a little bit too. So it's, you know, this is kind of our, our it's something we'll try new this year. Um, for the plebes, uh, for the new cadets up to a certain point in time, they'll probably, have, I'm sure the commandant, he likes, he likes the process of them earning privileges. So they, pro they probably won't have that ability to have that privilege right off the bat until they've proven their, you know, they've gone through the plebe system, they have their cap shield because part of I remember going through the study halls and the students like, well, I don't have my, I don't have a lot of homework. I'm like, well, kind of that is because all my teachers know what the police system is and how it, it does eat into their academic time a little bit. So what we do is we give them a little bit of buffer with regards to, all right, you don't have as much homework take home. You do more in the classroom, not as much take home. But while you're there, you can be studying your cap shield requirements. You can study your other things because yeah. they don't get to call home for the first time or, you know, they, they're restricted to call home until they get that capsule. So they've got to get their mission, the cadet resolution, all the ranks memorized, all these different things memorized, um, usually before they're making that first call home. Okay. Um, and so that's that little incentive, that little carrot at the end of the stick that says, you know, you want to do it. I still remember it. I think I got mine in three and a half or just about four weeks. It took me to memorize all the stuff. And that, you know, I was able to run down to the end of the end of the thing and do a collect call. <laughs> um and then when do they take their showers and when are those lights out so that's between study hall the end of study hall and 10 o'clock so this is where we'll probably vary this one up a little bit with regards to making sure the you know the number of students within the bathrooms is going to be modified so we'll probably we'll probably do i, I mean that, that's more like common as i'm dividing it by the tax but it's just doing a rotating basis of how many, you know, how many stalls do we have, how many, what's our area, showers, and then keep it to, you know, uh, minimal contact uh, between a group and just rotate them through. And I think they usually do that rotation anyway. They've been um, uh, throughout the years, because plebes usually will shower and, and go use the bathrooms at a different time than the old men, which are the, the two-year cadets and above. Um, and then the, the, kid, the, the cadets that have rank usually use it at a different time as well. So. Um, okay. It's just a matter of, so that's, uh, that's usually where they get that done um, is in the evening time just before bed. All right. And then um, as far as uh, um, how are the, the showers set up? Do they need to have sandals? Uh, I, I'd always recommend. So, so um, yeah, because they have to walk to the, yeah. you know, basically walk to the bathroom. So you want to make sure they've got a sandal. Um, uh, first flip flops is just works. Just is that provided? Way. Like you want it? Like so, I think that's on your pa on the packing list that you're going to be getting. Okay. They'll give you a list of different things. Uh, what the one thing just to kind of give you a heads up that I that I'm pushing for is any of the academic stuff, and I want to make sure that it doesn't. I don't want it to get sent. You know, paper, pencils, that kind of stuff. I don't want it to get sent to the to the barracks because mm -hmm. what happens is it stays in the barracks and never comes up to the schoolhouse. So then okay. they always come in and go. Where's your pencil? Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> you know, so, so, uh, and this is the, the one thing that we deal with. I think this is, uh, you know, these guys are very forgetful, um, which is, it's, but, but I can't, you know, between my own kids, I know exactly what's going on. So it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they'll, 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 you'll go around and you'll find the other one that you always remember is the, uh, you find the homework that looks like an accordion file on the bottom of the backpack, right, that uh, they didn't turn in. Right, so uh, so we kind of keep our eyes. We all know that, so it's usually pull your stuff out of your backpack. Let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna we're gonna try to, and I'm working with the parents association on this one is putting together that that you know the school list uh, of what to get, similar to what you would see in a public school, right? In in second grade, you bring this, and then give options for people to either order it through Amazon and just have it sent to us, and then we we have a box with your son's name on it um, that can go and stay up in the schoolhouse or 
Um, the other one is just to give parents can buy it, but then when they come in, they drop it off at the schoolhouse um, and do it that way. So uh, I think we're it'll, by dropping it off, we're probably going to build it when you guys come on. Is that we usually have people coming into that first check-in location. Um, this year we are, are trying to get all of, well, it's not trying, we will have all of our forms electronic. Um, and so there won't be any sitting in front, you know, for, for a long time congregating, going through paperwork. The biggest challenge is the medical stuff, obviously. Um, we have a, a lot larger medical be, uh, form because of the PIAA. Um, I don't think the seventh and eighth graders would have to really fill that out because they're not going to be in the, the varsity and JV type sports. They'll be more in, in uh, um, they think they can still do sports, but it'll be more intramurals until they can get into the, into the others. Uh, we let, we do let the seventh and eighth graders usually go in and, and they can be uh, kind of, they can go with the teams, but kind of like a ball boy or a, uh, you know, somebody like this so that they're actively involved. Um, so that's, that's kind of where that is. So it's, so the lists and, and, and so forth will come through electronically for you guys and give you a chance to see what's happening. Um, the boys wanted to know about uh, haircuts and uh, Jaden, obviously you could see he's got a beard and stuff. So they want to know like, when do they shave? How, what's their hair going to be so, like? So yeah, these guys, I've been told, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I can get my, yeah, shave actually. So I did just get my hair cut finally, right? So <laughs> we can let them know that they aren't going to have any hair when they first, when they first get there. It all no hair? Well, they'll have, they'll have, it'll be a one, most likely. Oh, it'll be, uh, yeah. yep. So the, the, the purpose of that one, I, and we can show, I think I've got pictures on, uh, we can always post a picture of the haircuts being done. I, uh, at one point in time, the parents were collecting the hair up, you know, and, and putting it in bags. Um, but it was, uh, no, that's, the, the, so we, all of the cadets get the same haircut yep. when they come in. I assume way, just much, I figure yep. I'd ask. <laughs> yep, so it's, uh, it'll usually go down to a one. The cadets, uh, we don't um, typically, the, the only ones that have had a chance of having a beard at one point were the, uh, the, the young men that we have from the Middle East um, yeah. based on their religion. Um, and we're still looking at that policy because I, I know when I was there as a cadet, even though it was so many years ago, we went, I, you know, I went with some of the princes from Saudi Arabia, and they shaved every day. Mm -hmm. So there was no, you know, so a lot of these guys, they'll try to get away away uh, with it of not shaving, uh, but but uh, we'll work with them on that one. And, and a lot of times, I mean, I, I think I had one young man where I, uh, I went out and I bought him a $15 uh, little razor that he could use to shave his face, right? So, um, so anyway, it was a, it was one of those, and it was it was interesting because after I had done it, I never asked him to shave again. He was always cleanly shaven, so it was nice. Uh, sometimes these guys just need a little bit of. They try something out, and, and they're going to do it. They're going to be like, "Yeah, hey, let's see if somebody notices." Uh, we'll, we'll notice, <laughs> especially when it gets bad enough. Um, and then uh, and then we will clean them. We will have them get cleaned up. So. Okay, um, I have a couple more questions. Anybody else have any more questions? I got a, I got a couple more. Yeah, actually, I'm sure if you have them, other people will be listening as well. Okay. Um, I believe we covered this in the last Zoom meeting, but I just want to touch base. Uh, tutoring. Mm -hmm. the, great, so, great question. So yeah. we have two, two types of tutoring. Um, okay. And obviously right now with uh, the COVID stuff and bringing somebody external from outside, I'd be a little hesitant in, in doing the face-to-face -face one until we go beyond green. Um, so that would typically take place in the library and that the, we, uh, the company's name, I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, so what they do is they, you know, we, we typically the counselor will help coordinate with the parent getting that if we, if we, how does this work? If we see a need, so parents can come in automatically with what they have, if they live around the area, they already have a tutor. They work that out with our HR because the tutor has to get clearances. They're not allowed on the campus without any of the, the PA department of education clearances. Um, so that's the first thing is, but we, the, the two services that we use, one is Revolution Prep, that's the online, and the other one happens to be, was a, is a face-to-face, -face, um, and they'll usually meet in the library, and, and those will be the resources that are available for the students unless the parents choose somebody on the outside. Um, there's a, other sources too, and then of course they'll have the office hours by the individual teachers too. We do have academic support period at the end of the day, right, so it's, Typically, they do finish their classes, and then there's usually an hour um, between three and four. The teachers are still in the classrooms 
um, and we have what's called academic support, which means a student, um, if they're on the what's called a deficiency list, they have no choice. They have to report to the teacher's classroom. Um, if they're a student who needs extra help, the teachers are available during that time, so they don't. They can. They have the choice of going to the teacher for help as well. So, those are those are the different options that we end up having uh, at the stage. But I, I think I think for this, until we are past the green phase, I think we'll probably minimize outside. Well, we're not. I don't think we are going to minimize outside contact with the young men. Um, I mean, there's ways to do it. I mean, there's ways of putting somebody behind a shield. You know, as well, and so you know they can tutor them that way. But that's that's a tough way to tutor. Um, it's just as easy to tutor online. So, but we'll okay. we'll we'll work. We'll go with those and work those out as we get the different scenarios. Okay, and then um, you mentioned commandant time. What is commandant time? So the commandant time. So that's where the commandant's department, the tag officers, the commandant kind of control what the cadets do. So they could be doing the intramurals. Uh, they can just take them all up there and they can do the high ropes course. They can take them and do the obstacle course. They can, you know, so, or they they can do practice parades. They can do those type of things. So um, that's typically the commandant side of the house, what their, what their wheelhouse is. That's um, daily? Um, so it would be in the, so if this, if your son is not in a registered sport, that's typically what they, then if they're not under the control of a, of a coach, then they typically would be under the control of the attack and the comma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And food. What's the food like? So this is a great question. Uh, we just had an RFP and we have a new food service that's starting this year. Um, so we had Sodexo. Uh, I can tell you the parents association was intimately involved with what the kids were being fed and how it looked. Um, and the parents that we had, and they're not an easy bunch. The please, right, which is okay. That's why I got them involved. Uh, they were happy. They were said it was fresh fruit all the time. They had, and then the way that they handled the COVID uh, scenario for a lot of our kids is that they we didn't have an open salad bar. They had individual bowls that were wrapped um, okay. in plastic that the kids could pick from or fruit. Um, I think I forgot how the fruit was sort of. I think the fruit may have been wrapped as well in plastic. So um, and individual sandwiches wrapped in plastic as well. So there's lots of different options and, and so uh, I have yet to see what the, how the new food service is going to do it but I can guarantee you that regardless of whatever they do the parents association is going to be all over them. Love so, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then when we send care care packages can we send them like snacks and stuff? So, I, so I, look I, I received snacks when I, I was there as a cadet. Um, I have my own stories about the snacks because that was uh, way back then but but uh, all good stuff. Uh, so I encourage you to, because you know during the plebe system, it's going to be tough for them. Um, they're going to be on their own. They're going to be getting in trouble uh, with half the stuff that they're doing, not knowing why they're getting in. You know, it's like you're not standing right. You're not you're, you're doing the drill the right way, and it's always it, it gets after a while it wears on them. But, they, but they're with a group of folks, and it's always nice to get that letter from home or get that care package from home. Right? Okay. So yeah. I, I would encourage you to definitely do that. Sweet deal. Goodies. Okay. All right, well, that about wraps it up for me. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, Andrew. Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm Andrew Erickson. I work in the marketing department. I also went to military school, and care packages are near and dear to my heart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my mom would send me a care package, and I would, she'd call me, and, or I'd call her if we'd talk on the phone. and. Uh, She'd ask how it went. She'd be like, would you try this? And it's like, no, ma'am. And she's like, you try this? Like, no, ma'am. And it's because once you bring that back to the barracks, all your friends get some. Yes. <laughs> Which is really nice because when they bring something to the barracks, you get something. Right, right. Okay. And so lots of little individually wrapped things. They can easily give them away and trade yeah. them, swap them. It's wonderful. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they love it's my not, yeah. peanut butter cookies and, and her brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet deal. So any other questions? Yes, I have yes, one. Um, for um, students that have ADHD, uh -huh. um, what type of, um, I know like, you know, your, your natural, your, your structure and your discipline of the school definitely helps with that. But um, if we have a student with a 504 plan traditionally in the public school systems, what kind of, um, 
resources or how are, how is that managed? Within so that's such a great question. We take all of the IEPs and 504s and because we're a private school, we don't, we don't do IEP 504. We do convert them into what's called a learning plan. And the learning plans have exactly the same, you know, what we can do, what we can provide them, extended testing time, small group sizes, uh, an agenda planner, um, things along those lines. That, so that's number one. So we build that into it. And then each teacher through PowerSchool, you'll see, when you look at PowerSchool, you'll see your son's name. It's got a little triangle next to their name. You click on that triangle, it opens up with all of their, you know, what, what is built into their learning plan. So the teachers know right off the bat that says we need to be, I need to build an extended, extended uh, time for them. We have, uh, and I encourage any parents that have uh, um, psych evals that, that, that demonstrate the ADHD or IEPs or 504s to make sure, don't hold those back, send those to us. Um, we have a lot of people that think that that influences our decision. It doesn't influence our decision. And that, it's actually better for us because we can submit that to the state. And by the numbers that we have, we, can pick, we get more resources from the state. So based on our numbers last year, we had a, a reading resource and a math resource that came in once a week that would work with individual cadets one-on-one -on -one to help them uh, with their skills. Um, so we have uh, this, this past year, we had a resource room, a uh, person who he's moved on, he's got his own daughter and they had to move on with her. So we're currently looking at how we're gonna handle that resource room. Um, that's usually that small group uh, that you know group, the areas that require the small group they can be done we have we have people who are behavioral counselors right now on staff I have my my associate dean is behavioral uh, health certified um, and my two counselors I have a, a 10th and, uh, or 11th and 12th and a 9th uh, 7th or a 9th and 10th and then Lauren Wolchuk usually handles the 7th and 8th uh, graders um, on, on making sure that all of us are not no none of them are getting dropped we have a, you know, we're making sure that we keep, we meet with them at different times. We meet with all the students, not just the IP and 504, but the ones that need a little bit of extra, extra attention or an extra help to get through with something. And, uh, and you as well as I know, because all my kids um, are in that, that scenario. And so we've gone through that fight for the 504s, the IEPs and everything else. Um, and, and, you know, going to all the meetings to have that done. So. If we, uh, I, I have, uh, I can tell you, right, my staff be the first one to tell you that, you know, if I see a scenario where I see uh, students' grades doing poorly on the very first academic pull, um, I will usually go through their academics and take a look at where they were and, and say, okay, does this guy have it? The first thing that I do is, do they have a triangle by their name, IEP 504? If the answer is no, then I'll typically want the counselor, I'll give it to a counselor, say, I need you to go back to their file find out what happened and I need you to reach back to mom and dad and ask if they ever had a 504 or an IEP. And so a lot of times we find out that the parents had requested it and the school, the, the school system denied it, right? And so at that point on our end, I would just basically say I, that I'm making a decision as the administrator to do an administrator initiated 504. Um, and so we basically, then we can sit down and say, okay, what do we need to give the young man in order to help him succeed um and so that's that's where i kind of focus do you but, do like a, a yearly meeting with parents or with the student to address so, to develop the, a learning plan or that's a great question so lauren typically lauren wolchuk is the one who typically will call out to the parents we'll write we'll take your 504 ip we write it up in the learning plan you are involved with the approval okay. of that plan um, and so we will typically will be in communication with you so that you can see what we have available and, and we work with you on that end. Um, the biggest challenge we have a lot of times with the, I, with, uh, with the ADHD students is, is those that have medications, right? Because they always want to fight taking their medications in the morning. Not all of them do, but a lot of them do. My son, I think, my, I, think I can't tell you how many I would find stuff between my daughter's mattresses, you know, where she didn't want to take it, right? And, uh, and so the idea would be, uh, you know, we have the, the nursing staff is who gives it. I think we'll have a little bit more control of it this year because they're going to have a larger window of time to get them up in the morning, get them in there, and then get them their meds on board before they end up in the academic schoolhouse. Um, 
you know, for the most part, we were successful. We had one or two students who progressed, you know, that were always, would always fight and you knew exactly when they did not take their medicine because it, it's night and day with those, with, with those, but it's, and it's only a couple others. It's a little more challenging to see it, but you just see the performance side uh, of the house suddenly, suddenly start doing this and you know, something's going on. Um, so we pay attention to it. Um, I'm a neuroscientist from the background. So I would have heard one of the first questions I have sometimes when I start seeing this is what medication is he on? What dosage is he on? Um, and I'll ask that question to the, to the, um, the health group. Um, and, and basically say if we know that a medic, if we see that even though he's taking his medication, he's not doing well, that's usually a reach out back to the parents and saying uh, we need to reevaluate this because um, a lot of times the students that come in here is dependent upon the parents have only been relying upon the pediatrician and not a not a psychiatrist to give the the medications and the challenge with that is the pediatricians are very limited in what they can give. And where the where the psychiatrists have a whole gamut of different medications that they can select from um, that are that that may be better suited for the for the young man. So um, so that's one of those things that we kind of say, look, we're recognizing it's not working. And then we encourage parents, just like you would with a normal school, if you switch medicines, let us know, and then we can do the teacher evaluations and we can let you know what's happening um, on that end. So and at any time, I mean, this is. I, the whole thing with this, the, the pandemic, which I'm kind of looking at it is, uh, you know, I've been trying to push all the faculty and staff to doing the online stuff. And you know how most adults are, you know, when you first start doing it, like, hey, that's, not, that's new, I don't want to do that, right? So it's, uh, I think anybody's like that. But uh, now that I know they all can do it, so this basically means that we can now start doing Zoom conferences with the parents. We've already, did, we've done a few video conferencing last year. But now that I know this thing's up and running and working well, yeah, I can guarantee you that if there's a scenario where we need to get mom and dad involved with the young man, um, we will do it virtually and have a computer in a room so mom and dad can see all the teachers sitting around the table and we can have a discussion and, and then we can bring your son into the meeting as well um, uh, to have that conversation. And, and I have no, hesita no, no hesitation to do that is is first we would meet as the adults and then to have him come in to justify to everybody why he's doing what he's doing and, and it's uncomfortable at first sometimes but they get through it and then they learn that there's the people around the table are there to advocate for them not to criticize them and so they they, they find that they have more support um, and we, we try we I usually will get guidance from from Lauren or his counselors on whether that's a great idea at first or not. So they're very in tune with uh, with the young man to know how he's going to respond to those scenarios. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're and this, I, I think that's another benefit too. The commandant has multiple children, so he's a father. I have multiple children. Uh, the, the president's uh, his his. His are all grown, but he had multiple children as well. So, um, you know, you're at a school that has folks uh, that have, uh, have gone through it or are going through it with raising young children. So, um, and so we find nine times out of 10, part of the role you're playing is, the, is a parental role or than, a, you know, a disciplinarian role and that kind of stuff. So it's helping guide them the right way. Any other questions? Well, if at, at any time, if you have any questions or you think of something, because I mean, if, if you're like me, I think about 10 minutes after I come, hang up the phone, right? Ah, I forgot to just reach out to Anna, uh, let her know what the question is. We'll get it to the right folks to get you an answer. And then we're collecting like frequent, frequently asked questions as well so that we can kind of put that information out to let people uh, to see other, other questions, other answers. So. Well, it's great meeting everybody. Good meeting you. Thank you well, for your time. You are very welcome, and so y'all have a great evening. Thank you. I had another question. My internet oh. shut off on me, though. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gone, dude. Oh, oh, yeah. There you go. I thought you. Were, I thought there was. I was like, man, she can hold a pose for a fairly long time. <laughs> oh, you're 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 going out a little bit again. I'm just trying to see if she can type it in. I'm 
I don't know if she's uh Andrew, can you type her to, to them and see what the question may be? Oh, she dropped off and she's gonna come back out. Well, I don't know about you all. I'm excited for this year. This is gonna be a good, this is gonna be a, a great, great moving forward on this one. Even though the, you, we've had our little bumps and grinds with this, the COVID stuff, I think, uh, you know, this is, we're in a unique position with the school because it's, it's, uh, it's, we've been able to successfully get through it in the spring and I think we won't have an issue with it in the fall. There we go. Uh, we got you. Maybe <laughs> type it really fast too before you. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. It's, it's uh, been acting funny. Um, Jane wanted to know more about the esports and what games um, you guys uh, like are playing specifically. So that's a great question, and I don't have the complete answer to that one yet because I know that they were looking at things like Call of Duty, and there's a few other ones that are that are out there. But um, I, I would have to reach out to our athletic director. I was initially involved with the process, and then they basically told me you have enough on your plate. We're taking it. <laughs> we're taking it from you. So. Okay. So, uh, so I will reach out to the athletic director and I will get that answer to, uh, to Anna and let her forward that answer to you. And they can't do that when they're in the plead system. They have to wait until they get out of that. And, and um, that's, not, that's not necessarily true. I mean, the, the pleads are going to be allowed if they're, if the sport is going on and they're a plead, they're still allowed to do their training for the sport. Okay. So, um, and I know that there's some stuff that's out there right now. Uh, did, did we put anything out on the internet yet for, I know Mary posted something about the eSports. Um, is there, do we have something on the webpage that they can go to to take a look at it? I didn't see anything for it. Okay. I seen about the tech summer program that you have okay. um, that you touch based on, which is uh, Dylan finds very interesting too. Okay. Um, but not eGames. Okay. So I'll I'll get the uh, I'll get the e-gaming e information and then we'll get it to you guys. Uh, and, and I think that's something we can post anyway. I know that we were we we posted to mention that we're starting one, but but we can get the games in. There. Cool. Any yeah anything else? I'm all I'm all good. Thank you for waiting for me to come back on. I appreciate it. No, you're that. perfectly fine. You're perfectly fine. Thank you. So well, if there, nobody has any other questions, then feel free if you come up with something, write to Anna and she'll get it to me. But if not. Have a great evening. And, uh, you too. Will, Thank will, you. Yeah, I'll see you all in the fall. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> right. Bye. Bye-bye.